In this tutorial, we're going to explore the use of custom brushes within the sculpting tool. To help you get started, we've included a set of pre-made brushes that are available to use right away. You can locate them by going to your public documents, Vetrip files, and then into the sculpting brushes folder. And that's where all of these brushes are housed. Now these brushes have been modeled in the software and they've just been exported out as a component brush for us to use with the sculpting tools. So let's start by showing you how to create your own custom brush and then we'll learn more about this very powerful tool. So I'm going to open a file that we've already created. So we're going to open this custom brush sculpting file. Okay, so here we've got some vectors that we're going to use to look at creating our first brush. So I'm just going to the 3D view. See, I've just got a simple circle and then a simple cross section here. We're going to take both of those and we're going to look at creating a custom shape. Okay, so we're using that profile uh, against our circle to create this shape. So we're just going to press create and that will create that there for us. Okay, so we'll just call this one brush one. I'll go ahead, press apply and then we'll just close out here. So I'm going to go into our components tab. Now, I'm actually going to duplicate this brush by using the duplicate option. It's just going to create a duplicate version of that. But then what we're going to do is we're just going to alter the properties of this one. Where we're just going to give this one a total height of 0 0.5. So it's going to be much flatter than the original one. Then we're just going to alter the name of this to 0 0.5. And we'll go ahead and press apply. So we've got two components now. Okay, so we've got one that is brush one, which is this one here, and we have another brush, it's the same brush, but we've totally flattened it down to half an inch tall. Right, and so we're going to look at using these two brushes to demonstrate our custom brush sculpting uh, first, and then we'll have a look at another example shortly afterwards. So in order to save out your brush, what you need to do is you need to take your component and you need to right click and then use this option here to save a sculpting brush. And when you click on that, you can navigate to a folder in your system. So for example, we could just go and add uh, our brush into the default sculpted brushes that you get with your software. And we could just save that. And then we're just going to take our second brush here, right click, save a sculpting brush. And then again, we'll just save that there. Okay then, so we're actually just gonna switch off these components for now. And um, we're just going to go into a different layer. So we're gonna undraw brush one and just make sure layer one is the active layer. We'll go into our design tab. And then we're going to go into the sculpting tools. Okay, now we don't actually have a model here. So we're gonna get prompted to create a component, which we're just gonna hit yes on. Okay, so we're just going to OK that. So in order to use our custom brushes, we need to either be in the add or deposit or the subtract or remove tool. So either three or four in order for us to activate our custom brush. If you go on the other ones, you'll see that this is greyed out and we can't actually select our brushes. So we're gonna go onto the add then we're going to check this option here to use a custom brush, load a brush and locate your folder. And we can see the brushes that we've just created here. So I'm going to take brush one. I'm going to go ahead and press open. You can see we've got a handy graphic that represents the brush that we're currently using. So let's see how easy it is to use your custom brush. Okay, so you can see within our 3D job, you can see I've got my cursor and I've got a handy ghost graphic of my brush. So I can see my brush here as I move my mouse around. And in order for me to create a brush stroke, I can do it two ways. I can either click to almost stamp my brush, or I could just simply click and drag. So click and drag like so. And you'll see when we click and drag, we've got a very, very tall shape here. And the reason for that is because at the moment we're currently just adding pixels on top of pixels. So if I click here and then click again and I just continue clicking, you'll see that I'm creating more height. And that's because with every click I'm adding another brush on top of that, which is why we're getting the height in there. 
Now, if I didn't want the height in there, I could simply use the merge option. So it's the same way that our combine modes work. So now when I click and then click and click and click and click, and then take a look on the side view, you can see there's no difference in height here. And that's because our pixels are all merging together. And then this works really nice then when you can just apply a brush stroke by gliding it across like so. Okay, so let's just discard what we've got here just to give us ourselves some more room to work with. Okay, so seeing how you can glide your brush across. Now, if you wanted to have a dead straight line, like horizontally and vertically, for as long as you're in the top view, okay, so make sure you're on the top view there, um, you can hold down H whilst gliding across to create a nice horizontal straight line, like so. And then V for vertical, so hold down V, and then you can create your vertical line like we've got here. So let's just discard what we've got here. So now we're going to look at the diameter, strength and smoothness options. So currently our diameter is at its max at 301. When I click, you can see that there. Now I can alter my diameter using the slider here. And you'll see we get a smaller brush, smaller like so. And then again, I can increase that if I wanted to. Alternatively, I could use the left arrow key and you'll see that my cursor is getting smaller and it's also pulling along the slider and then I can use the right arrow key and then that increases my diameter. Alternatively I could hold down control on my keyboard and then use the scroller of my mouse and when I scroll that towards myself my brush gets smaller and then when I scroll that away from myself again control still held down the brush gets larger. So now let's have a look at the strength option. So the strength of the brush depends on the Z depth of the brush that we actually made. And we're going to look at a comparison of the two brushes that we made earlier. And we'll see the effects of that shortly. But we can still adjust the strength of our component brush. So to do that, again, we can use the slider. So at the moment we can see we're at 54. And if I click, we can see that there. If we go right down to five, you can see we've got a much lighter lighter brush there and then alternatively if you go right to the top you can see we've got a much stronger brush okay so you can see uh, the less strength you have the lighter it looks the more strength you have the uh, more bold the more sharper and fuller your brush is going to be now you can also use keyboard shortcuts to access your strength so for example if you are working a lot in this in the 3D view and you don't want to come over to the sculpting form, you could look at using your slider. So the uh, down arrow key reduces your strength and you can see that that slider is moving. And then your up arrow key increases your strength. So now let's take a look at the effects of altering the smoothness slider. So it's currently at one. Let's just click to create a brush stroke there and then we'll ramp the slider up to 100 this time and then click next to it just so we can compare the two okay so let's just twiddle our view over here and you can see here that they're actually very different effects and so if we just take a look over here you can see that we have more of a point at the top where everything is kind of sloping down in comparison to the original where it's kind of maintained the original brush look and the smoothness in the component brushes is just a linear fall off from the center of the brush to the edge of the component. So when we apply smoothness, the center point will remain at the actual center height and the heights will be reduced as you get further away from the center. And so it creates this sloped effect. Okay, and so to show you another comparison, let's just go back to our top view here. So let's set our slider back to one and then we're just going to draw in like so and then we'll increase that smoothness to 100 and then again let's just draw a similar line there and then again let's just twiddle our views to take a look at that and so if you wanted to maintain the original shape then what you want to do is just set your smoothness to one uh, however if you wanted to create this smooth fall over then you just want to increase your smoothness over there 
Now, in addition to that, we actually have another option to apply further smoothness to your brushes. So staying in the deposit tool over here. Now, if we hold down control at the same time, you can see that as I drag that out, we're applying a much more smoothness there. And so you can see we've got lots of different options between the diameter strength and smoothness settings to really control your brush strokes. Okay, so we're just gonna discard this for now. We'll just say yes, just to clear all of that. So now we're going to look at a comparison between brush one and then the duplicate brush that we created where we really shrunk the height down. So whilst we've got brush one active at the moment, we're just going to decrease the strength to around halfway and then decrease the smoothness all the way down to one. Okay, so we're just going to stamp and we're also going to create a glide across with our original brush. So we can see that there. We're going to go to load brush and this is where we're going to pick up our other brush. So we can see uh, brush 0.5 here so this is one that we created a duplicate from the original brush but we totally shrunk the height down and then if we click to create our stamp and then drag to drag that across you can see uh, the difference here is, is quite epic in that um, we've got more height within our first example and we've got a lot uh, less height in our second example and so it just goes to show that when you create your brushes if you want more detail more visibility in your brush strokes then you want to make sure that you work with a component brush that has been created from a model that has quite a lot of height as opposed to something that has been shrunk down like this. Okay then, so we're just going to discard all of this now. I'm just going to go ahead and press yes just to accept those changes. And so now we're going to look at the effect of using the dynamic rotation option. So let's just cancel out here. Then we're going to go to our layers tab. I'm just going to switch off the visibility of layer one, switch on brush two. Okay, so here I've got a simple vector. So we're just going to create a shape from it. We're going to look at creating a smooth shape here. Okay, so I'm just going to edit what's happening here in the slider. Okay, and then I'm just going to shrink the height of that component down. Okay, so I've got this interesting shape there, I'm happy with that. So we'll just call this one brush two, and then we'll go ahead, press apply, and then we'll close out. Okay, so let's just go to our components tab. We're just going to export this as a brush. So we're gonna say, save as sculpting brush. Okay, and then in here, we can just go ahead and save that. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're just going to switch the visibility of that component off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in back to layer one at the top here. So working with a blank space into our design tab. We're gonna go back into the sculpting tool. We'll just okay that to create our component. So then we're gonna go and use a component brush and then we'll load in our brush. I'm gonna bring in brush two and we'll press open. And then we'll just decrease the strength of a slightly and we're just going to set our brush to merge. Okay, so you can see what we've created here. Okay, so that looks nice. We can stamp that as well, just as we've seen earlier. Now obviously, like when we move our brush, it's obviously only moves kind of in relation to our strokes and that the, in the direction that the brush was actually made in. But we do have the ability to adjust that. So let's just discard what we've got here. So first, one way we can do this is by using the R key on the keyboard. So hold down the R key down and then using the scroll of your mouse, you can scroll away from yourself to rotate your brush clockwise or rotate or scroll towards yourself to rotate anti-clockwise. And you can see the ghost rotates as it does there. And then you can then use that to create different sort of strokes, like so. Uh, alternatively, if you wanted it to dynamically move with the movement of your mouse, then we can use the dynamic rotation option. So let's just discard all of that there. And then we're just gonna use this option here to use dynamic rotation. 
So I'm going to pull the angle back to zero and if we come over into the 3D view, we can see here we're now presented with a red arrow above the ghost of our component brush. So this arrow represents the direction in which we're going to be uh, traveling and creating our brush stroke from when we move our mouse. And this direction is always above the actual component itself based on the way that the component was drawn up. So we drew our component up in this horizontal fashion and that arrow is going to be above that. Okay, so the way that we can then simply create our brush stroke is you simply click with your mouse to kind of start your brush stroke and then using your mouse you can just move and you'll see that the software will just follow and it turns the actual brush as you turn the mouse as well and so you can see we've got those uh, corners there and you can see it's just following our direction whichever way we're actually moving our mouse and you can see the result of that there okay so that's pretty good however what if it wasn't the right way around that you actually wanted to have the brush kind of follow it around then what we'd have to do is we'd have to look at just rotating the component we created the brush from and then re-exporting that out as a component brush so for example let's just discard that i'm just going to say yes and then we're just going to cancel out here then we're going to go to brush two okay let's just go to our component switch brush two on and then we're going to take that and we're actually just going to press 9 on the keyboard and then 9 again so we're rotating it in increments of 45 degrees and now we're going to take this component and we're going to export that as a component brush so we're going to right click here say save sculpting brush and this time we're going to call this brush 2 and then I'm going to press uh, call this one V for vertical and then press save and so now when we come to use this brush that we've rotated as part of our sculpting brushes we should see the arrow above up here and that's going to be ensuring that we're going to be traveling in this direction so let's just undraw the visibility of that component we'll just go back to layer one over here back in our design tab into the sculpting tools and then we're going to load up our component brush Okay, so here's brush 2 V. So that's the one we just uh, rotated here. So we can open that up. We can see that there. And then when we use the dynamic rotation, you can see the arrows now on the tip of that component there. And so now when we use that, we get a different result as we move our brush. Okay, now with long thin shapes like the one that we're using here, when you have sharp corners, you can see it creates kind of a Catherine wheel effect. Okay, so you just want to be careful uh, using sharp corners with kind of long thin sorts of shapes. This is another option for you to further control the way that you use your brushes in the software. And so that completes this video. Thank you for watching.